Hey guys, I'm here to welcome you to our brand new series. That was weird. Anyways, I'm here to welcome you to our brand new series. Okay, let's try this one more time. I'm here to welcome to you to our brand new series. Miss Chastity, do you need some help? Oh my, you are so messy. Boys and girls, speaking of help, that's what our brand new series is called. Help, and it's all about Moses and the Israelites and their story in the Bible. And if you're new, we have a special announcement for you. We send out mail every single week to all of our friends. It's super fun. All you gotta do is text in your name and the word new to the number on the screen, and we'll start sending you our mailers. They have color sheets, prizes, letters. You wanna be on that list, and all you gotta do is text in your name and the word new, and we'll start sending and you are mailers. Miss Chastity, yes. um, we probably should get you cleaned up, huh? Please. Well, boys and girls, we are so excited that you're here and we hope you enjoy our brand new series called Help! Hey, hey, Kids Crossing. Welcome to our series, Help! My name's Mr. Eddie, and I'm super excited to be here today because I get to talk about one of my favorite guys in the Bible, Moses. Everybody say, Moses. But, but I, I, I can't tell my story because it looks like Miss Chastity or Miss Manny put a box here in my way. Let me see what's happening here. Oh, this box is really, really heavy. Oh, it's our big idea. They left me the big idea. But before we get to our big idea, see what's in this box, let's talk to God. Everybody bow their head and close your eyes. Dear God, thank you so very much for allowing us to be here today. Thank you for Kids Crossing, and thank you for helping us whenever we need help, dear Lord. I pray that you will help us understand our lesson today about Moses and how it can apply to each one of us. And in Jesus' name, we pray, amen. All right, let's see what our big idea is. It says, God helps us in our weakness. God helps us in our weakness. Now, I kind of know what weakness is. It means physical weakness, like, like you're strong, right? Let me see your muscles, everybody flex. Boys and girls got you today. You need to do a little bit of work. So, but it also could mean like, like, like we need help whenever we're having trouble doing things. Like we're having a hard time. Like I'm, I'm feeling weak right now from lifting this box up. So I think I'm going to go get me one of those fancy water drinks and I'll meet you right back here. And I'm going to tell you a story about Moses. Open our eyes to see the need Open our ears to hear the cry The broken hearted, the wounded soul You're calling us We will go, we will be your hands and feet We will run, we will 
That was some sure great singing and dancing. It looked like some of y'all worked up a sweat like Mr. Eddie did picking up that box earlier. All right, I'm excited to tell our story. Now, this story is about Moses, right? Everybody say Moses again. Now, do you believe that Moses was a baby at one time? So let's rock Moses. You're going to help me tell this story. So Moses was a baby at one time, right? But his mama wanted to keep him very safe. See, Moses was an Israelite. And during that time of Moses, they, they got captured. Right? Oh, I got to keep rocking Moses, right? So they got captured by the Egyptians, right? So they got captured by the Egyptians and they were enslaved by the Egyptians. And that just means they could not leave Egypt and they worked for the Egyptians for free. So Mo Moses' mama wanted the best life for Moses. So what she decided to do is she was going to give Moses to one of the Egyptian ladies so they could take care of him. And so they lived by a river. And so what she decided to do, she was going to put Moses in a basket. So let's put Moses in a basket, right? And she's going to gently put him in some reeds on the river by these Egyptian women. So the Egyptian women, one of them happened to be the Pharaoh's daughter, the king's daughter. Everybody say the king's daughter. So she takes him and raises him in the palace of the king. He ate the best food and he slept in the best bed and he grew up like an Egyptian, even though he was an Israelite. So one day after being grown up, he goes down and he wants to check out his fellow countrymen and see how hard they're actually working. So he, he goes down, he looks down and sees an Egyptian not being very nice to an Israelite, okay? So he intervenes and it does not turn out very well for the Egyptian. And the next day he goes down again and two Israelites are now arguing. So now he goes down and intervenes again and it doesn't turn out too well either. So now the Egyptians are mad at him. The Israelites are mad at him. So he decides, I'm going to leave Egypt. I'm just going to get away from here. So he leaves Egypt and he goes out in the desert. Everybody say the desert. So he goes out into the desert and he's thirsty. So he stops by a well. And at that well is a bunch of ladies. And they're trying to, trying to water their sheep. Everybody make a sound of a sheep. Bah, bah. Right? So they're trying to water their sheep, but there's some mean men right there. And they're saying, you can't water your sheep, ladies. And, 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 and Moses kind of bows up and does some MMA stuff, I bet. And he whips up on those men. And now the women can, can water their sheep, okay? So the, the women are so thankful and so happy. They take Moses off with them to live with him, to live with the father. He gets married, and now he's a sheep herder. And everything's cool, everything's great. I mean, he's happy, right? So one day as he's tending the sheep, he's out in the desert. Everybody say the desert. And he sees off this bush that's burning, right? Now you think about this. A bush out in the middle of the desert is burning, but it's not really burning up. So he's curious. I'd be curious too. So he walks over there by that bush and the bush starts talking. Now if I was that bush and I was out in the middle of the desert and I'm on fire, what do you think you're going to say? I'm going to say, put me out, Moses, put me out, Moses, give me some water, right? Or trim me up, I need a haircut. But no, it's God who's talking in that bush, from that bush. And he has this very special message for Moses, right? He wants Moses to go back to Egypt to rescue the Israelites. And Moses, it, it like clears the sand out of his ears, saying, God, did I hear you right? You want me to go back to the place I just left that people don't like me and rescue the Israelites? Let's watch our video and see what happens. It's time for our Bible story. Last week, we left off with Moses, the baby that was saved living with Pharaoh's daughter. He was living a great life being raised by the daughter of Pharaoh, but he had no idea where he came from. So one day he made a huge mistake and got into a fight with some guys. He ran away from Egypt because he thought he would get into trouble and started a brand new life with a new job. One day while he was working, he saw something rather strange in the distance. He saw a bush on fire, but the bush wasn't burning up. Moses came closer to the bush because, you know, he had to make sense of it. Then the bush started to talk to him. It was God in the bush wow. talking to Moses. 
Moses took off his sandals to show respect to God. God had a very important job for Moses. God wanted Moses to return to Egypt and help his people, the Israelites, get out. Moses felt that God should pick someone better for the job. God, of course, knew better. Yes, Moses felt weak and not prepared to go back to Egypt, but God was going to help him. God said Moses could take his brother, Aaron, to help him speak. God was going to use the staff and other things to show everyone that Moses worked for God. Now Moses was ready to go to Egypt to rescue the people of Israel from Pharaoh. So Moses really did not want to go back to Egypt and face all those consequences, right? He was making all kinds of excuses like, like I can't talk well, God. But God helped him in his weakness, right? God know, knew his weaknesses. He knew the mistakes that he made. He said, I'll send Aaron. Aaron, your brother, he talks really, really well. He'll go. I'll just tell you and you tell Aaron and Aaron will tell everybody else. And he said, I can't convince the Pharaoh to let the, let the Israelites go. So God said, you know, I'll give you a couple things here. First, I'm going to give you this staff, right? The staff was used to help fight off things with the sheep, protect sheep and, and kind of gather up the sheep. He said, now drop your staff and see what happens. So he drops his staff, and all of a sudden, it becomes a snake. It becomes a snake, right? It becomes a snake. And he said, as soon as you pick that snake up by the tail, it's going to become a staff again. How cool is that, right? So whenever he drops his staff, it becomes a snake. Whenever he picks a snake up by the tail, it becomes a staff again. So God provided for Moses in his weakness. Just like he's going to provide us with things in our weakness. Our weaknesses could be, Mr. Eddie, I don't make friends very well. You see, God will provide for you, provide help for you. Because see, it's like we're under an umbrella of God's mighty strength. And all we have to do is reach up and grab that strength that God provides for us. And he will give you what you need. Or you say, man, I don't want to go to my mom and dad because I lied to them and, then, and I'm, I don't know how to say I'm sorry. So you're going to reach up, grab God's mighty strength, and he's going to show you how to do that, right? So God will always help us in our weaknesses, always provide for us in our weaknesses. But the one thing that we need to do is we need to have that relationship with God. So God can just release his mighty strength through us. And we get that relationship by putting our hope and trust in Jesus, believing in Jesus, that he died on the cross for your sins, and you admit that you sin and that you're forgiven by what Jesus did on the cross for us. Now, boys and girls, Jesus came down out of heaven and rescued each and every one of us. And I got a special surprise for y'all. I have a very special rescuer here in the building. That's hard, kind of hard to say. Guy that rescues, right? And he's here in the building. So I'm going to go get him, and we're going to interview him and, and, and find out what he does. I'll be right back. Captain Dustin must be out on a call, but we have him here on video. Hey, Captain Dustin, that's a cool uniform you have. What is your job? What do you do? I'm, I'm a fireman, so what do I do? Um, as most of you would think, I fight fires. Um, any kind of fire you could imagine. So if it's in your house, if it's in a car, if you live out in the country and maybe the woods are on fire or a brush fire, we do all those sorts of things, all those types of fires. But we also do um, a lot of medical calls, which Basically, if you call 911 and need help before you get to the hospital, uh, it's likely we're going to show up as firefighters and come help you. Um, whether that be if your brother breaks his leg or maybe your grandpa is feeling sick and you want to call and get help right now um, and call 911, the firefighters are going to show up and help you. Um, we also do a couple other specialty kinds of things like we do hazardous materials responses. So if there's yucky chemicals or gases that got released from something, 
um, will show up and try to keep everybody safe and, and cover those products and contain them so they don't affect um, the population and you guys. We also do airport firefighting. If you're on an airplane and there's an emergency in the air or even when it's on the ground, we'll have big fire trucks with big turrets that have water and we can come help everybody in the plane and help that aircraft if it has some kind of technical difficulties. So there's a lot of things we can do. Technical rescues up in the mountains or if you're stuck in a hole, we do confined space rescues. So really anything that's not in a hospital and you call 911 and need help for, a firefighter is going to come and help you guys. That sounds like a cool and amazing job. Hey, have you ever had to rescue somebody in real life? I have had a lot of opportunities to rescue people who were in need. Um, I've been a firefighter for about 20 years, um, so I've had a lot of opportunities. Recently, I've been in a command and control um, role, so I kind of direct firefighters on how to do things. So most recently, about two weeks ago, we had a call um, that came in 911 that someone was in a car accident and they were potentially trapped in their car and they needed our help. So the firefighters got on scene, and indeed there was one person that was stuck in their car from the accident. The car had crushed in and they were stuck. The dash had trapped their legs in their seat of their car and they couldn't get out. Um, so the firefighters grabbed their special tools. They couldn't open the door because it was crushed to where the handle wouldn't work. So they used a special tool and opened the door. They got in and, and accessed the patient and started trying to treat his injuries. Um, and then they grabbed another special tool and pushed the whole dash off of the trapped person and were able to free them out of the car that was really damaged. And they had some injuries and the firefighters were able to start treating those injuries and helping them and getting them into the ambulance where they transport them to a hospital and were able to get a little bit more definitive care. So um, that's the most recent rescue that we've had. Have you ever been afraid during your job? And if you have, did you ever ask Jesus to help you then? Um, absolutely. I mean, I think that's a common feeling all of us have, and we've all experienced it. So, of course, I have that feeling. Um, the way I deal with those issues at work, not so much with the, the duties that I'm doing. Um, I rely on things that I can control. So what can I can control? I know I can control my attitude. I can control my effort. I can control the things that I focus on and trying to help people and not doing uh, selfish things. And I'm, I'm trying to do selfless things for people. I know I can control those things and that helps me um, be really good at my job and help people when I have to help them. Um, where my faith comes into the picture is a lot of those things I can't control. So I know no matter what, there's potentially good and bad things in my personal life and at work when I'm a fireman that I might see that are, are bad things. People that get hurt, um, they may pass away, they may lose a lot of property that they potentially worked their whole lives for. And I, and I think to myself, um, sometimes that can be hard emotionally. Um, it can make me feel sad. Like, why did this happen to these good people potentially? Um, and where my faith comes in is, is I know that those things I can't control, um, I, I know God has a bigger picture. He has the biggest picture in mind. And things that I don't, I don't understand or I can't control, I know that um, He is controlling. And I know there's a, maybe a bigger purpose for those people. And I rely on that just to know that when those bad things do happen, um, God has them in mind and He knows their purpose. And um, that is where I, I rely on my faith to um, keep me moving in the right direction. That is so cool that Jesus can help us in all situations, even in your situation as a firefighter. Now, can we say our Bible verse together? I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I want to thank Captain Dustin for being here with us today. Can we thank Captain Dustin together? Captain Dustin, thank you. Thank you all for having me. It's been a great time. Hey, Captain Dustin, can we pray for you right now? Yeah, that would be great. So boys and girls, everybody bow their heads. We're going to pray for, for Captain Dustin. Dear God, I pray that you'll look after Captain Dustin during his job as a rescuer, as a firefighter. Pray that you'll protect him and help him when he needs your help. 
And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Boys and girls, that's all the time we have today. Why don't we get back on our feet and let's sing our last song and I'll see y'all next time. Darkness, follow his lead and light it.